right, folks. So um, today I'm going to talk about improving applications with DevOps. So let's just dive right in there. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a coverage of what is DevOps. Um, I'm going to talk about people, process, and products, which is part of the answer. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a demo of DevOps in action. Uh, and actually, we're going to have a little audience participation at the end. So have your phones ready. I've got some QR codes. And uh, you can see what I've done to actually uh, live uh, update some uh, a website that I have built. So let's get started. OK, so I want to show you a little bit of an example here of the evolution of people, process, and products. Everybody talks about how things have changed. Uh, but this is a great, great way to highlight it just with a one minute video. Let's run the video. But Holland comes in for a pit stop. Time to refuel and change tires. Lou Moore himself changes the tires. Only four crew members, including the driver, are allowed to work on the car. It's a tense time. Holland stays in his seat, anxious to get away. Let's watch. So four people are allowed to access the car. are changed at last. A crewman polishes the windshield as Holland moves away just 67 seconds after he stopped. Let's see how things improve over time. go so a little bit of an improvement as you can see uh in efficiency if you notice there's a few things that are really really relevant to to technology uh, first of all there's only four people allowed to touch the car at any one time and it takes a while to get everything refreshed uh in the newer uh process a whole bunch of different people are accessing the car they all need to have access but the advantage is things move faster and uh, hopefully you keep ahead of your competitors uh so it's very, very relevant to, to technology as well. I mean, it's the same exact thing happening. Uh, you know, in, in the past, it was acceptable to have just a handful of people who could actually touch production source code and, um, and databases and other things that are working with the core of the company. And that's, uh, you know, that's important to, you know, it's understandable because it's the core piece of business that makes the company run. Uh, but now a whole bunch of people need to have access, dev developers, mobile developers, partners, uh, people on the web want to have access to your inventory directly, uh, things like that. So uh, you need more people, but also you have opportunities to make things go faster. So anyway, let's talk a little bit about what is DevOps and how you can actually address some of these challenges. Uh, DevOps is the union of people, process, and products to enable continuous value uh, to end users. It's a great uh, quote by a colleague of mine, uh, Donovan Brown, and he basically has uh, worked on this for a long time. Uh, let's just get in and dive in and talk about the different components of that. Uh, one of the things that is interesting is um, there's a, a group called DORA, the DevOps uh, Research Associates, and uh, they create a Accelerate State of DevOps report every year. This one's from 2019. And they talk about different things that are uh, important to DevOps organizations and how really, really advanced DevOps organizations address these things. And the benefits they've had is uh, 208 times more frequent deployments, which actually might scare some people. Uh, you're going to have 208 times more deployments than you do now. Uh, but if you notice, um, there's seven times lower change failure rate. Uh, they also have um, 106 times faster 
uh, time from commit to delivery. That's what that says over here. Uh, and then uh, 2,604 times faster incident recovery. So if something does go wrong, which happens seven times less than normal, uh, it is recovered much faster than an organization that doesn't have a DevOps process in place. So that's some of the cool stuff. You can get the whole report. If you just search on Accelerate State of DevOps Report, uh, you can get the latest report out there. So Donovan mentioned people, process, and products. Uh, you know, people are the most important part of a DevOps organization. If you don't have uh, very clear roles defined for different groups and very clear uh, ways of collaborating between those groups, uh, you run into a lot of confusion and you run into a lot of problems when you're trying to deploy your code. Where the developer just says, hey, it works on my machine, just you know, make it work on the cloud. And the you know, ops people are saying, no, you know, you've got security issues, you've got problems with scaling, we need you to do this in a different way. If they're not communicating, they're not talking to each other, don't respect and understand their roles, then you're really not going to have any, um, any success regardless of how much you've invested in a DevOps process. So DevOps process typically follows the software development life cycle process with plan, develop, test, release, and monitor. Um, and um, it's really important to make sure that each one of these tasks uh, is not the, the people assigned to each role understand what their role is in each one of these tasks going ahead. Now, one way to actually handle that and help work with um, your organization and your people is products. So products are a great way to actually uh, automate some of the collaboration, make sure people understand their roles and enable them to work together rather than struggling to work uh, in keeping up with whatever DevOps process you put in. Uh, for Microsoft, we've got a few pieces of technology. I'm not gonna highlight them all here. I'll discuss them in a demo a little bit later. But uh, the one thing that I do want to highlight for you right now is uh, Azure DevOps. So Azure DevOps is a cool way to actually help implement your uh, DevOps processes. And if you've already got investments in products like Jenkins and Chef and other things that do pieces of your DevOps process, that's okay. Um, you don't have to worry. You can actually keep your investments in those infrastructure and just integrate with Azure DevOps. There's lots of different ways you can do that. And I'll show some examples of that in a bit as well. But, um, you know, highlighting Azure DevOps, we have Azure Boards. Azure Boards is a great way to uh, manage your tasks, delegate tasks. It's Kanban boards. And you can actually trigger things like you can trigger a build or a release based on when a task moves from one stage to another. Uh, so it's all integrated with everything else that we have for Azure DevOps. It's pretty cool stuff if you uh, check it out. It's one of those, uh, actually, Azure boards I've been working with a lot lately. It's extremely powerful and very underrated. So uh, do check that out. Azure repos is like GitHub repos, except they're inside your organization. So GitHub, uh, you can have public repos, you can have private repos. Uh, Azure repos is very similar, except uh, for two key things. It's integrated with your identity management system inside your organization. So you can manage who has access to your code. You can remove people who shouldn't have access immediately if there's uh, issues. Uh, and it also handles TFVC, which is a team foundation version control if you're using TFS or anything like that. Um, the uh, uh, Azure repos is a great thing for that. So I'm gonna show some demos today of Azure pipelines. Uh, there's build pipelines and release pipelines. What are they? They're actually just um, processes that you grab on our host machines and uh, allow you to do uh, builds, tests, and deployments. We also have Azure artifacts, which is a great way to manage packages for package managed uh, applications like uh, Node, NPM, Maven with Java, and other package managed applications. Uh, it handles all the package and dependency management for you, stores them uh, for backup, for auditing purposes, and things like that. Azure Test Plans is cool as well. Uh, it does website testing, it does load testing, uh, and you can integrate it with your deployment process. So you can test things, and if your uh, next version of the software meets certain thresholds, you can have it automatically move to the next stage of your deployment process, for example. All right, so last but not least, we have GitHub. So GitHub uh, has GitHub Actions. Uh, those of you who've heard of that, uh, GitHub Actions is a great way to automate and manage your 
code uh, directly from GitHub. Uh, Azure DevOps has a little bit more with um, deployments. I'll show you the examples of the two side by side. I'm gonna actually do a little demo in a minute where I trigger a change in my GitHub repo by uh, committing. And when I push that commit to the repo, it's actually gonna trigger a Azure DevOps pipelines process and a GitHub uh, repo process as well using GitHub Actions. Um, and it integrates really well with uh, your current IDEs if you're using any, uh, but you know, most people are familiar with GitHub at this point. Uh, it's a great tool and GitHub Actions makes it all that much better. Now, something that a lot of people aren't so familiar with, GitHub Actions has got a lot of press, but GitHub Extensions have actually been around for much longer. I'm gonna show you a demo of GitHub Extensions integrating with Azure DevOps with, with GitHub. Uh, and they're written by third parties. Uh, and you can go to the GitHub Marketplace and look for extensions. Uh, I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So I mentioned, you know, people process and products and how do you actually uh, enable people to collaborate and understand their roles and work together in a, uh, in a comfortable way. Here's an example. So we have a website called Tailwind Traders. Uh, and what we're gonna do, we have a dev team, we have an ops team. And these are the things that each one of these teams is uh, assigned in terms of tasks. So the dev team is in charge of code. Uh, they're in charge of unit testing, uh, GitHub repo, CI CD automation. Uh, and then ops is in charge of the Azure DevOps project. Uh, they're in charge of web servers, scaling, and they're in charge of some aspects of CI CD automation as well. Uh, the dev team makes sure that the CI CD automation build builds correctly. The, the ops team makes sure that the CI CD automation builds not just correctly, but also in compliance with any requirements they have for security or anything else, and also deploys in a secure way too. And then uh, the ops team is also in charge of monitoring and security. I'm gonna show you examples of uh, how they enable all that. So here's the uh, Tailwind Traders website. Let's just go in there real quick. Oh, I got this Zoom thing popping down here. There it is. Okay, so this is the Tailwind Traders website. And you see right now it's got a, a, a shipping $99. Uh, so the guys in sales are thinking $99 is too cheap. They're losing uh, money on some shipments. They wanna increase that to $499. But some people in the company think, oh, if we increase it to $499, it's gonna impact sales. Okay, so uh, they go to they come to the dev team and say, "Hey, we want to try out uh, a four hundred ninety nine dollars shipping cost. What can we do to enable that?" Well, uh, basically, what you would do is um, you implement something called an A/B test or a blue or, or a canary test, where you can deploy uh, the four hundred ninety nine dollars shipping cost to some of the customers, not all of them and then find out what the behavior is, see if it uh, shipping has actually impacted by changing the cost. So let's actually go in, I'm just gonna dive right in there and we are going to make this change and then I'm gonna show you what happens when you do that. So if I go into my um, Visual Studio code, it's a free open source text editor for those of you who might not be familiar with it. It's got a whole bunch of extensions. Anyway, this is my Visual Studio code for this GitHub. I'm looking at my code locally and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to $499, not $499, $499. I'm going to save it. And now what I need to do is I need to stage this and commit it to push it. So uh, Visual Studio Code has a whole bunch of Git commands built in. So I can just hit this little plus here to uh, stage it. And then I can say for developers change shipping to $499. All right. And then I can commit it just by clicking the checkbox and then I can push. But I'm not sure if something's already changed in there um, in my repo. So instead of doing a push, I'm going to do a sync. And the sync will basically do a push and pull uh, from the origin. So let's let that happen. I see this little blue thing up here. That's actually pushing right now. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so if I go over here and I actually check out my GitHub repo, blah, 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 I think it's that one, yes. Okay, so you'll see 
here, hopefully, when I refresh. Yeah, changing shipping to $4.99. Great. So we changed the shipping to $4.99. That's all we did. Now, this actually triggers an automatic update in my GitHub Actions. And it also triggers a automatic update in my Azure DevOps pipelines. So how does it actually do that? Let me just make sure that it did it before we uh, get into a description. Okay, pipelines. Pipelines, come on. It didn't, oh, it maybe did here. No, it didn't. All right, so I had some problems with this earlier. I think they might have, uh, they might be working on it because it's late at night here. It's 1.25 a.m. Las Vegas time. Uh, that's okay, let's go through and I'll show you how you actually fix this. Um, I mentioned before the marketplace, GitHub marketplace for um, Azure pipelines. Let's go in here and let's search for Azure pipelines. Okay, so I already have Azure pipelines installed. And this is something I don't necessarily always need to do, but sometimes I do. It's supposed to trigger an automatic build from this. So let's do a confirm. All right. And then let's save this. Save. Save. Okay, so what it does is it actually, this sets up the connection between GitHub. We're going from GitHub now to my Azure DevOps account. So I have to go into my Microsoft Azure subscription instead of my GitHub uh, login. And then I choose my Azure DevOps organization and I choose my project, continue. All right. Then it's going to ask me what I want to do with this. I want to select a repository. Do, 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 do. Okay, of course, I want the Tailwind Traders website. That's the one we just changed. You know what happened? It looks like they've updated a little bit of the um, functionality here. All right, so I can, this is connected now. And I can actually cancel out of this now if I want to. And I can go straight in my pipelines and I can build a release as if it was triggered automatically. So let's go in here and let's build a, I've got to move this so I can run the pipeline. All right, so I can move this out of the way again. Okay, run. All right, so what that's gonna do is it's actually gonna run a build. There we go. So the build is actually running. Now this would normally be triggered automatically. I think they're doing some work live. So uh, anyway, that's uh, I had to uh, show you how to do that. I usually show a video of that because I have to give my GitHub password and a whole bunch of other things that I usually don't like to do live. But anyway, uh, I did it live. <laughs> um, and now it's actually building. So it's going to build. And once it's built, it actually should automatically trigger a release. Now, I want to talk a little bit about what it's doing when it's actually building here. So let's go back here. There's a thing called Azure Pipelines YAML file. And that's why I was able to actually do it. So when you when you first create the uh, connection between your GitHub and your Azure DevOps, it actually generates a file for you. Uh, but in this case, what we wanted to do is we want to use a, a YAML file that our ops team has put together. And that YAML file has a minimum requirements for compliance inside the organization. So basically, it goes out. Uh, it's called Build Job. It gets the latest version of Windows, and also Linux and Mac. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, it gets a NuGet tool, tool installer to build, to download Node. And then it does a Visual Studio build using Visual Studio that's built into the host machine. Uh, it does a test, it copies the files to an artifact staging directory. And then once they're there, they're gonna be picked up by a release. All right. So uh, I mentioned before that this also triggered a GitHub action uh, as well. Let's look at that. So if I go back to my repo, let's go to the dashboard and let's open the 
uh, repo again. Tailwind Traders website on GitHub. So there's actually code here. If you're looking at GitHub workflows, there's also code here for uh, deploying this using a GitHub action. And if we go in here into my actions, you can see that this was actually triggered and it failed. And it failed on purpose, by the way. I set it up to fail on purpose, and I'll show you why. Build. I, I didn't want it to actually deploy to the same. I've got to set up to deploy to the same place I'm deploying. I want Azure DevOps to deploy to my staging target. I don't want uh, the action to deploy to my staging target. So what I've done is I've actually crippled it a little bit. Uh, it needs a node 10, if you recall, in the previous YAML file. In this case, I uh, don't use node 10. Uh, I use node 14, and it actually fails. If it, it passes the build, but the requirement for the environment that we're running this on needs uh, node 14, I'm sorry, node 10. So it actually fails when it tries to publish to the website, which is good. That's a good thing. All right, so these things, what are they running on? So the Azure DevOps is actually running on this thing called Microsoft Hosted Agents. Uh, the Microsoft Hosted Agents are machines that you can just grab and run. Uh, so when I say use Windows latest, it goes out and gets the Windows Server 2019 Visual Studio. There's also a 2016, there's Ubuntu 20, 18, 16, and Mac OS, uh, Mojave and Catalina. So you can actually go in uh, and let's look at the um, software that's included. Tons of software is pre-built in here. So the only thing I needed to download was Node 10 because it's kind of old and it's not part of the standard. Uh, if I look at Node, it's 12, 18 is the standard one we have installed. So these are pre-installed, but you can add software if it's not part of your installation. All right, so as you can see here, a lot of software. Uh, I won't go into all of it, obviously, but uh, there's a ton of applications, uh, including Java and a bunch of other things that are actually pre-built, and you can just basically use them. And if there's not, in the rare case that the software you need is not already on one of these hosted machines, you can install it separately using YAML commands. All right, so let's check in on that, that build. Okay. Looks like it's four developers changed shipping to 499. It's still working. So, okay, let's talk about some other things. Um, what else did I wanna show you here? Uh, in terms of the actual build itself, I mentioned a couple of things. Uh, yeah, I showed you the actions, I showed you the node. Let's go back to the slides. Um, so that's a video that I usually show of actually setting that up. Oh yeah, I wanna to talk to you about keeping your investments. I did mention that before. So you can keep your investments. If you use any of the products that are, are shown here, you know, including Chef, Puppet, Node, uh, you know, uh, GitLab, um, we, we actually integrate really, really well with all of these. They're all partners, Jenkins. Uh, and because of that, we actually have some pretty cool stuff to show you. Um, let me show you ci.jenkins.io. This is ci.jenkins.io. This is actually where Jenkins builds Jenkins. And a while back, several years ago, Microsoft actually donated some resources to the Jenkins project. Uh, and uh, so we actually part of the build process. So up here, that's very identifiable. It's AWS that's running. So what happens is when a pull request comes into Jenkins, uh, they actually run tests on different versions of Ubuntu, high memory, uh, different versions of Windows, uh, Maven, uh, several things that they use to run different images to test and see what's going to happen in different scenarios with that pull request. Uh, in this case, you see a lot of easy to stuff, but there's things down here. ACI is actually um, a uh, implementation of uh, Azure's uh, Azure Container Instances. So this is a container-based testing that they're doing with all these different packages. Uh, they also have some Windows uh, items as well. So they, Jenkins actually uses uh, Azure to do a lot of tests in Windows and containers. And they use EC2 for some things as well uh, on AWS, but uh, uh, they do use Azure as well. And I wanted to show you that because part of what came out of that participation in our partnership there was uh, several reference architectures. So if you wanna set up a really, really robust uh, Jenkins infrastructure on virtual machines, 
Uh, you can do that with uh, on virtual machines with ACA MS Jenkins ref architecture. It gives you a breakdown. And there's literally a button you can use to deploy this image uh, with all these multiple virtual machines and everything uh, out to Azure. We also have a similar thing for containers. Uh, it uses uh, Azure Community Service. It uses Jenkins. So in all of these scenarios, you use Jenkins for the build and the test, which is what Jenkins is really, really good for. Uh, but then when it comes to actually doing the deployment, um, Azure DevOps is really, really good for a lot of things because first of all, it integrates with your identity, identity management system. So it's inside your organization. It's inside your subscription. Uh, also, um, uh, of course, GitHub Actions is uh, part of that as well. Uh, you can actually deploy things that way, but it's a little less robust. They're working on it, but it's still less, less robust than uh, Azure DevOps uh, release pipelines. So um, that's kind of cool. You can keep your Jenkins for doing your build and test and then pass things off to Azure DevOps to manage your deployments. Uh, part of this as well is we have a ton of plugins and that's actually what enables most of the integration between Jenkins and Azure. So uh, we have a bunch of plugins actually maintained by Microsoft, which has uh, other cloud platforms, they're maintained by third parties. All right, so we're getting to the audience participation. Let's see, I'm really hoping this is getting there. Uh, boy. Let's see. Pipelines, did we go? Oh, it's still running. Okay. Well, I can show you something. Uh, actually, I do want to show you this anyway. So the pipeline is still running, it's still building. If I look at the release though, so I've triggered some releases in the past and I'll show you a backup release pipeline that I have just to show you what I'm talking about when I say that uh, Azure DevOps is, is pretty robust when it comes to deployments. So what you can actually do here uh, I've got a, a, a three-pronged uh, workflow here for deployments. I've got staging. Staging actually deploys from a successful build to uh, a staging server. I've got Canary, which is a what we call deployment slot. I'll explain what that is in a second. Uh, basically, Canary deploys to a deployment slot and enables some A-B testing. And in this particular scenario, you have to approve uh, things from... Uh, the uh, canary stage to production for it to actually move to production. And there's a post-deployment post condition to actually be deployed and a pre-deployment condition. So what happens here is the post-deployment condition stops and says, uh, hey, uh, we don't want to go into production just because you have a successful item in staging. We want to go into test. We want to do A-B test before we move it into production. And then there's a pre-deployment condition. The pre-deployment condition says, okay, so maybe you're done with the canary test and you want to put this in production, but not so fast. Uh, we have rules about those kind of things and we don't just put things into production when you press a button in the canary. So this is all part of the roles and responsibilities and understanding and collaborating with people and enabling that with software. Uh, so the canary will not proceed to production unless the pre-deployment conditions are met. And the pre-deployment conditions can be, for example, uh, testing for final compliance or just saying we don't deploy anything except on weekends. So uh, you can actually time your pre-deployment condition to, to deploy to production that way. Uh, and if you go in here, you can see the kinds of things you can do. So triggers, uh, you can do after the stage uh, from Canary. Uh, and in this case, move that over there. You're just doing pre-deployment approvals, which is me. And it's just going to deploy it out to uh, Azure at a certain time. But in production, it'll actually, you can actually choose the time you're going to do it. The other thing we have is these gates. So the gates are actually, um, uh, cool as well. It's got a lot of different things you can do uh, to add uh, Azure policy compliance. You can run a function. You can check a REST API. So if you have a third-party tool that checks for compliance that has a REST API, you can do that and automatically move things to the next stage of your deployment. This is a really simple deployment. Um, let me just disable that again. Uh, in a lot of cases, though, you might have you know 10 or 15 different stages here before the actual deployment is done. All right, let's check back with that pipeline and see what happened. 
Oh, good. Okay, so I think the pipeline is done. Yay, it's done. So the stage is done. So let's go to our releases. And in this case, the release has been triggered. So there it is. It's deployed to staging and it's waiting for Canary. So let's see what this is. Let's go actually into this release. I'll move this around again. So um, Canary uh, means that this is in a deployment slot. And we don't necessarily want this to be in production yet, so that's exactly where we want it to be. So if we go in here and we look at the logs, we can see that the run on agent deploy Azure app service is deployed to something called Canary. And Canary, as I mentioned, is a deployment slot. So basically what a deployment slot is, is an environment inside of our production web server that runs Let's see what happens here. Uh, I hate the way this, it dropped when I'm, I don't know, you guys probably can't see this, but it uh, if I go to the wrong place, it drops down. Uh, there we go, so staging, there we go. So it says $499 or more orders. But if I go into production, you'll see that it still says $99. Actually, no, it says $499, why? Should not, huh? Okay, what I do? Did I screw this up? <laughs> I might have. Um, all right, let's see here. If I look at the pipeline, so the releases. So it went through the releases. Yeah, release five. It should be pending approval. All right. It's very strange. Oh, I know what it. I'm a dummy. Okay. A B testing means 50% of the people go to the new site, 50% of the people go to the old site. I'm looking at the new site. I'm one of the 50% that goes to the new site. So, uh, in order to set this up, the next thing we do uh, is this is an optional audience participation. If you guys want to hit this um, QR, oh, that's better. That's a better display down there. Um, you can hit the QR code, and some of you will see the $99 shipping cost. It's late over here, folks. And uh, some of you will see the $499 shipping cost. So I'll just give you a second for that. Uh, yeah, we still got a couple, couple of minutes of time here. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to another QR code where you can actually enter a poll. And inside that poll, we'll find out how many people saw which site. Okay. So hopefully everyone got that. You should see either $99 or $499. And if you re-click on it, it's gonna go back to the same one because it's a sticky session and it won't take you to the other one. It would be very confusing in a real world situation. Okay, so if you go into the straw poll here, uh, just check out what you uh, see there in the QR code. Uh, just choose one of the two options we have, which is $499 or $99 uh, and um, check that out. Okay, so next up, let me open that up myself so I can see, so everyone can see along with me what the straw poll said. Okay, so mine was 499, so I'll vote. Okay, go to results. Okay, there you go, so perfect. 52% of you saw the uh, $99 and 40, oh, it's going up. It's changing 54, 46. Anyway, you get the idea, half and half of the uh, polls. So um, thanks for participating there. Uh, yeah, it's um, it, it basically, that's the whole idea. And then what I can do when I'm done with all that is I can go back into my project and I can just say approve and sure approve. And then if I want to, if I wanna get really fancy, so I mentioned the pre-deployment approval, I can defer this appointment until tomorrow if I want to, or whenever. Uh, and you know, uh, that's uh, if you're not a developer, you deploy this on a Friday afternoon, right? So anyway, I'm just going to approve it for now. So that's actually going to go into production. So everything will be $499 in a second. All right. So a little review. Uh, what is DevOps? Uh, people, process, and products. Uh, we saw a, a demo of DevOps in action, and then thanks for um, you know participating, and I uh, showed you some ways of keeping your investments too. 
Uh, here's some resources. I'll share the slides later, but basically there's a resource center for DevOps where we have all kinds of info on DevOps in general. And then uh, at ACA MS Azure DevOps Docs, we have Azure DevOps topics specifically. So the first resource center is great if you just want to learn about DevOps, like what is CI CD and things like that. Uh, it takes you through the concepts. Uh, we also have a uh, Learn, which helps you get the AZ400 um, DevOps certification for Microsoft. If you're interested, there's a Learn module you can go through and find out all about Azure DevOps, and uh, it really does help you pass the test. All right, so that's all the time I had. Uh, thank you for joining. I'm not sure in this format if we have questions or not, but. Uh, uh, if we do and we have time, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, uh, I'm at bbenz, at bbenz on Twitter. Uh, feel free to ping me there and follow me as well. So thank you.